Hi, I'm Herman Mays. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Biological Sciences at Marshall University and an adjunct researcher at Cincinnati Museum Center. And I'm here to talk about our paper published in Current Biology titled Genome Analysis, a Demographic History, and Ecological Niche Modeling in the Endangered Sumatran Rhinoceros, Dicera rhinus sumatrensis. The Sumatran rhinoceros is among the most imperiled mammal species on Earth. And with colleagues at the Cincinnati Zoo, Marshall University, Academia Seneca, and the National Taiwan Normal University, we sought to produce the first ever genome sequence for the species and use these data to ask basic questions about the population history of Sumatran rhinoceros. We sequenced the genome of this individual Sumatran rhinoceros behind me. This rhino's name was Ipu after the locality on the island of Sumatra where he was collected. Ipu came to the Cincinnati Zoo from Sumatra in 1991 and he became an extremely important part of a program that was focused on breeding this critically endangered species in a managed program. And the research we were able to do with Ipu and his mate, Emmy, um, really allowed us to unravel the mysteries of breeding Sumatran rhinos in captivity, which was a, a huge achievement for the Cincinnati Zoo. And we were really pleased that we were able to produce three calves in a period of just about six years. Um, with Ipu and his mate Emmy. So they were just a really important part of the research and a part of the effort to save Sumatran rhinos through captive breeding. Ipu continued to live his life out here at the Cincinnati Zoo. He was here for 22 years um, and a very important part of this animal collection throughout those years. Millions of visitors had an opportunity to see Sumatran rhinos because he was here. Um, but finally in 2013, he did have some health issues and we think it was a combination of old age and thyroid cancer um, that finally made us make that hard decision um, that his quality of life was, was over. He was such an important animal to Cincinnati and to the Cincinnati Zoo and Botanical Garden that we were thrilled. The Museum Center here agreed that it was an important specimen to prepare um, as a taxidermy specimen so that he could be on exhibit to people for years to come. And it was a great partnership then um, that we formed to make that happen. And at the same time, we were able to preserve some tissues and some biological samples uh, so that this incredible project um, could take place. Rhinos are iconic examples of evolution. They have a rich fossil record and once were found throughout the old world, including Europe, and even widespread in North America. However, only five species of rhinoceros exist today, with a sixth group of rhinos that has been extinct since the end of the Pleistocene. Two rhinoceroses are found in Africa, the black rhinoceros and the white rhinoceros. The rest are found in Asia. These include the greater Indian one-horned rhinoceros, found today in northern India and Nepal, the critically endangered Javan rhinoceros, today confined to a small refuge on the island of Java, and the Sumatran rhinoceros in Southeast Asia and the islands of Borneo and Sumatra. Another rhinoceros, the woolly rhinoceros, probably represented more than one species and was found in grasslands and other open habitat on the Tibetan Plateau, Siberia, and throughout much of Northern Asia. Surprisingly, the closest cousin to the tropical forest-dwelling Sumatran rhinoceros was likely these cold-adapted grassland woolly rhinos. From there, the relationships among the rhinos has been under some debate, but it would appear that the Sumatran and woolly rhinos are more closely related to the other two-horned rhinos in Africa the black rhinoceros and the white rhinoceros. And the other branch of the rhino family tree consists of Indian and Javan rhinoceroses. We sequenced the entire genome from tissue samples collected from Ipu and stored here at the Frozen Tissue Collection at Cincinnati Museum Center. The diversity of Ipu's genome was comparatively low with only about 1.3 heterozygous variations in the genome for every thousand bases. This is similar to the genetic diversity found in recently extinct populations of woolly mammoths or in inbred domestic breeds of horse. To look at population history, we used a technique called pairwise sequential Markovian coalescent, or PSMC. Each individual genome from a sexually reproducing population contains a sampling of genes from the population with two different versions or alleles of each gene. Looking at the differences between the two alleles across many loci throughout the genome and comparing those results to expectations based on population genetic models, we can estimate the demographic history of the population from a single individual. Here's what the PSMC analysis revealed. The Pleistocene was a time characterized by cool temperatures and lower sea levels. Lower sea levels created land bridges connecting the islands of Borneo and Sumatra in what is today Indonesia to Asia. 
This emergent region of land in Southeast Asia is called Sunda land. Early in the Pleistocene, the effective population size of Sumatran rhinoceros was much higher than today, and by about one million years ago, rose to a peak of around 57,000. After this population expansion, however, things seemed to not go well for Sumatran rhinoceros. Steep declines in population, likely due to climate fluctuations, soon followed. Except for a slight rise in effective population size, sometime around a brief warm interglacial period, most of the population history of Sumatran rhinoceros was characterized by decline. Throughout the last glacial period from about 120,000 years ago to around 10,000 years ago, Sumatran rhinoceros population steadily declined. By the end of the Pleistocene, they had reached their lowest point and showed no signs of recovery afterwards. To help understand the climate variables that are correlated with population decline in Sumatran rhinoceros, we also built ecological niche models. Ecological niche models match occurrence data from a species with climate data to create a model of the climate niche for that species. Based on climate modeling, we can extrapolate back in time where favorable climate would have been for the species and thus look to see how changing climate affects species distributions. We built these models for three different occurrence data sets. The top row is based on occurrence data sets that include historical and fossil records from other rhinoceros species in the region and thus represents the broadest possible climate niche for Sumatran rhinoceros. The middle row only includes known Sumatran rhinoceros species occurrences, and the bottom row are models based on occurrences only from the subspecies of Sumatran rhinoceros found on the island of Sumatra and peninsular Malaysia. The population Ipu and our genome sequence are from. The first column here represents the present day niche model and shows where suitable climate is for Sumatran rhinoceros. The distribution of favorable climate for Sumatran rhinoceros during the last interglacial period, approximately 120,000 years ago, when there was a warm period and sea levels comparable to what we see today, is a lot like the distribution of Sumatran rhinoceros today. Climate during this period likely isolated all three subspecies of Sumatran rhinoceros from one another, including the subspecies on Sumatra and peninsular Malaysia, the Borneo subspecies, and a subspecies that in historical times was largely isolated to Myanmar and far eastern India and southern China. A cooler climate at the last glacial maximum approximately 22,000 years ago coincided with a decrease in Sumatran rhinoceros populations. Niche modeling showed an expansion of suitable habitat in terms of climate variables, but still for most models with the most suitable habitat being combined to isolated refugia. By the end of the Pleistocene, climate warmed and sea level rose and this submerged, once again, much of the Sunda Land corridor, fragmenting Sumatran rhinoceros populations and thus leading to habitat loss. Analysis of the demographic changes in Sumatran rhinoceros using genome data showed that their populations fluctuated wildly during the Pleistocene. And by the end of the Pleistocene, they were reduced to their current levels and never really fully recovered. Ecological niche modeling suggested that fluctuating climate may have played a role in these population swings. It's important to note that population fragmentation can have similar effects or can occur alongside population decline. And many of the declines in effective population size we estimated are likely due to fragmentation. And the ecological niche modeling suggested that climate change fragmented Sumatran rhinoceros populations also. In addition, climate likely wasn't the only factor in the low effective population sizes by the end of the Pleistocene. Archaeological evidence indicates that humans were changing the forest in Borneo as early as the early Holocene, and that they likely were hunting many forest mammals in the region as early as the late Pleistocene. So humans also have likely been directly affecting Sumatran rhinoceros populations for about 10,000 years. We are using this genome sequence from Ipu to learn more about the biology and evolutionary history of Sumatran and other rhinoceroses and plan to delve further into the data, looking at functional genomics, genome evolution in rhinoceroses, and rhinoceros phylogenetic history. We hope this genome data will be a fitting legacy for IPU's time in Cincinnati and lead to a better understanding of rhinos and their conservation plight.